Hello and welcome to the Whirly Bloke channel. I've done a load of Tiny Whoop and Cine Whoop reviews recently and they're all pretty good and a, a good sensible price. But it got me wondering if you can build something that works just as well and at what cost from individual components. So I'm going to show you how to build this Cine Whoopy, a Tiny Whoop style quad with 1080p HD onboard DVR, an F4 all-in-one flight stack and a carbon fibre 92mm frame. So here's the components I've chosen for my Whoopi build. First off is the Whoopi HD V2 cinematic nano frame kit from Tomo Quads. Now I've used quite a few frames from Tomo Quads and they're really well designed, great value and even though I'm in the UK they're delivered pretty fast. And this is a 92mm frame made from 1mm 3K carbon and it's cleverly designed so that you've got loads of different component and build options. It's got holes for a 16x16 16 or 20x20 20 20 flight stack or even a diagonally mounted Beta 75X or Mobula stack. It's very nicely finished and you get standoffs bolts and some 3D printed TPU parts to fix the camera and antennas and there's even a battery strap. It's all very simple but really effective. This is an H layout which means the camera is mounted far forward and the props won't be in shot. For the flight stack I'll be using this Sussex F4 Mini 16x16 all-in-one that I've reviewed before. It's not the cheapest but it's very robust and not fragile like a Crazy B F3 or F4. It's based around a Matek F411 stack with 12 amp ESCs and a 200 milliwatt VTX with smart audio. For the camera I'm using a Cadex Turtle V2. It's a split system with FPV and 1080p HD and onboard HD recording. It's pretty much a choice between this or the run cam split. I've just chosen the Cadex Turtle V2 because it fits quite nicely. The motors are D1103 11,000 kV from full speed. These have been used on several popular package builds and they weigh less than 3.5 grams each and I know they perform really well. I had these ducks sitting on the shelf and I think they're spares from a full speed tiny leader but there's loads of cheap ducks around these days so just take your pick. They're cheap but make sure you get one that's reasonably flexible and not brittle so it doesn't break. I'll leave links in the description for all the components that I've used. The total cost for these parts was around $200 or £150 in the UK but remember I've chosen good quality parts. I could have used cheaper stuff but I wanted something that was going to survive and keep working plus get HD footage. So let's get started. Building the frame up is pretty easy and it just means bolting the ducts and the motors on. Using separate ducts rather than a plastic frame makes things much easier. So we've got a few of the pieces in place here. We've got the XM Plus wired onto the flight controller. We've got a heat shrink on here with just a couple of cutouts the bind button and the LEDs and then I put a connector on here which is the 5 volts power for the Cadex Turtle board and then we've got the buzzer I couldn't find actually a small buzzer but we've got this slightly larger one which is okay we'll find somebody to tuck that in and then the Cadex board itself is mounted on the top plate underneath We've got the connector for the dongle, the joystick for the OSD, and we've got the power connector here. And by doing it this way, it means that we can actually just undo the three bolts holding the top plate on, lift it away, and unclip it. And that's pretty neat, I think. And then the microphone on the CADEX board. So this is starting to come together. I think all we need to do now is to get this top plate on and all the wiring tidied up and get the Cadex K 
camera actually fitted. Looking pretty good. So we're nearly done. We've got the camera connected up. The buzzer is fixed down here and fixed down with some foam tape. Uh, I've got the receiver fixed down with some foam tape over here. I can still get to the bind button and I can still see the LEDs. We've got the Cadex Turtle PCB which is fixed to the top plate. The power comes up here and there's a connector there so I can just disconnect that, disconnect the camera cable and lift the whole thing away if I want to get back inside here. And this is the flying lead for the OSD dongle. So all we need to do is get this all fixed down in place. Okay, so we've used this small TPU 3D printed bracket to support the RX antennas and I've tie wrapped a small dipole to the back here to keep those out of the way of the props. I think that'll be fine. Now before we go anywhere, let's just see what this weighs. We've got 64 grams, which is comparable with the iFlight Cine B, which is pretty much what I expected because we're using some heavyish components here. The camera, there's an extra board, which is the Cadex Turtle PCB on there, and this Sussex flight stack is not light by any means, but it is very robust and makes a nice build. I don't want this to be an acro type quad. This is for cruising around slowly. And I'm just interested to see whether doing one of these homegrown builds or just building for components, how it compares with something like the iFlight Cine B. So here we go, we're all finally bolted together and set up in beta flight. The only changes that I needed to make were these two motors needed their direction reversing in the BL Heli configurator which is pretty straightforward. And you can see here we've got the Cadex Turtle V2 camera. I've got some pads on top to stop the battery slipping around. Uh, we've got the antennas all poking out the back out of the way of the props, which look pretty good. All the wiring down here is well out of the way. I've mounted the Cadex Turtle PCB from the top plate and left just enough room with these standoffs to get the battery strap between the two because I've gone for a top mounted battery. So this is all looking pretty neat. We've got the receiver at the back here and I've arranged that so I can still see the LEDs just to make sure that everything is correct when the transmit is connected. And I don't know there's much more to say on that. But it's going to be interesting to see how this performs against the Cine B. HD, which is uh, my favourite Cine Whoop at the moment. It's really good. But it's an interesting exercise to see how easy it is and how quick it is to build yourself a Cine Whoop just from individual parts. To be honest, the price is a, li it's a little bit more expensive, but it's not too bad, to be honest. And it's just one of those things that is, well, it's fun. Anyway. Let's get some flight footage on here and see what it looks like.
there we have it the Cine Whoopi HD it's not going to win any races or acro contest but that wasn't what I was aiming for slow flow 1080p footage is what I wanted and I think that's what I got there's some tiny amount of jello in the footage but maybe some soft mounting of the top plate and fine in tuning of the Betaflight dynamic filters will reduce that and the video isn't perfect but that's just the quality limit of these split 1080p cameras if you bump up the sharpness on the camera OSD you get nasty ringing on the edges of the video keep it down to about one or two and you get a softer but more real look and the only grading I did on that footage was to push the black and white exposure to fit 0 to 100% to get a punchier look and I slowed it down a tad this was shot at about 7am in the morning and the light wasn't at its best for this small sensor and it flies very smoothly mainly because I've dialed back the PIDs and got loads of RC Expo watch out for some more footage from the Cine Whoopi thanks for watching and if you found that useful give me a thumbs up and leave a comment and if it's your first visit then please subscribe to the channel for updates I'll see you next time